The occupation comes to Portland State. The demands protesters have after PSU officers were found justified in killing a man on campus. Save by the magic word. The clever trick that kept a Portland elementary student out of danger that you can teach your child tonight. And why the country's most popular Oregon Pinot Noir is actually made in California? KGW News at 6 starts now. First tonight, students at Portland State are calling for all campus officers to be disarmed. This after two officers shot and killed a man on campus this summer. KGW's Mike Benner is live at PSU. Mike, students marched earlier today, but now they've set up camp. That's right, Laurel, quite the crowd camped outside the campus a public safety office. Let me step out of the way here. This right here is the occupation for Jason Washington. Three demands coming from this group tonight. One, disarm campus police immediately. Two, fire the officers involved in the shooting. And three, allow a permanent memorial to Washington. Now, earlier today at noon, there was a rally in March for Washington. who was shot and killed by PSU police over the summer. Washington was shot at 17 times, hit nine times as he was trying to break up a fight outside of the cheerful tortoise near campus. Washington was pretty drunk. His blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit. He was legally permitted to carry a gun, which fell to the ground during the melee, and when he picked it up, campus police shot and killed him. Students we spoke with say he did not need to die. Take a listen. There's a family and a man attached to this policy. Um, it's now evident, even though it already was to us, that this policy is so dangerous. And so I think people are understanding that the stakes are much higher now. All right, so the school has hired an independent security consulting firm to take a look at all aspects of campus security. Several public hearings will be part of that process. So this is far from over. Back to you. Thank you, Mike. In a developing story tonight, Portland police are looking into a suspicious death in Old Town. The victim didn't show up for a probation appointment, and when his parole officer went to check on him, he found him dead in his apartment. This was at the Sally McCracken Apartments at Northwest 6th and Everett this afternoon. We just talked with neighbors who knew the victim. He seemed to be a pretty nice guy. We talked and stuff. But other than that, I just hate to see the fact that he's gone now. And for whatever reason, I don't know. May God bless him, though. A medical examiner is working now to determine the cause of death. In the meantime, investigators say they don't believe there's any danger to the public. For the third time in the last month, a stranger has approached a child near a local school trying to pick them up. Most recently, a man came up to a student outside Atkinson Elementary in Portland. But thanks to a family code word, the boy knew not to trust him. KGW's Lindsay Nadridge spoke to parents and staff about what happened in Lindsay. Schools are working to beef up security. Yeah, that's right. Atkinson Elementary School here behind me started locking their doors today. That's just one security measure in the works to help protect students. Stranger danger. It's a term we all know. But how often do you talk to your kids about it? Staff at Atkinson Elementary School say running scenarios with your kids will help them know what to do in a bad situation. What can you do to be safe? And also talking to them about scenarios. So, so giving them a story of what if this happened, what would your reaction be? So that they have an opportunity to talk about what they would do and then parents can coach them on, hey, that was a great idea or maybe you could do this differently. One student did exactly the right thing when a man approached him near the playground at Atkinson Elementary School last week. The man said his dad sent him to pick him up. The kid asked the man to tell him the family code word. When he couldn't, the kid ran to safety. Having a code word helped protect the kid in this case. Many say it's a good reminder to do the same with your children. My children and I have a code word, but hearing that incident just made us um, talk about it some more. And I think it's also important that not just elementary school kids, but junior high kids, high school kids, they need to have code words too. This is the third incident we've seen near local schools this month. I think there's a lot more of this going on than people realize. And as I said, I think it's in every neighborhood. So we all as parents and just as a community need to need to protect our children. Portland Public Schools is currently working to beef up security at all buildings. Parents like Ingrid McTaggart say they've been waiting for that to happen. There's no buzzer system to let them in. There's no camera system to see who's coming into the lobby. So somebody could come into the lobby. The office doesn't see them. 
and that's a potentially dangerous situation. So within the next month, the district plans to add video intercoms to the entrances of all buildings that don't currently have them. They say this will help ensure that only people who are supposed to be at the school are let in. Back to you. Thank you, Lindsay. A local youth pastor is accused of trying to have a sexual relationship with a teenager. Police say 30 year old Ryan Mutchler set up a meeting with the victim at a church camp back in June. The girl's parents found out though and alerted officers. Police say Mutchler was a youth pastor at Mountain Park Church and helped with the Aloha High School marching band. He's now facing several charges, including luring a minor. Beaverton police say there could be more victims and they're asking anyone with more information to give them a call. Police in Woodburn are looking for a suspected rapist who didn't show up in court in Marion County. Margarito Sanchez Vega is charged with rape and other sexual abuse charges. He's described as five foot three, 160 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. If you see him, contact the Woodburn Police Department. Portland police right now are on the hunt for two armed men who robbed a home and threatened the owners. This all happened on the North Foss Avenue just before five o'clock this morning. The suspects took off in a Jeep. Officers later saw the Jeep in a driveway near North Chase Avenue, but the guys got away. Pretty scary. That's the first time something like this has ever happened. It's a safe neighborhood. It's a family neighborhood. Police say the suspects are white in their 20s. One of them was wearing all black clothing. If you know who they are or have any information, call police. Turning to the weather now, a pretty cool sight from Pacific City last night. Check out the moon wow. set. Wow, isn't that great? The moon was big and bright last night on the coast. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino now. And Matt, we're a couple of days into fall, but it sounds like it's going to feel a lot like summer this week. Great week ahead, Laurel. And here's another moon set picture for you. This is from Yahat. Sent it to us via Facebook from Dalla Alexander Francis about 2 a.m. Look at the moon. It looks like the sun setting over the ocean there. You can still see the stars. And you know what? You can expect an equally illuminated night tonight because the moon was actually full tonight, too. It was basically full last night, too. So, again, look for this tonight. It'll be another spectacular night with a clear sky all around the state. Moon rise over Portland is at 7.22 p.m. So that's when we'll begin to come up pretty much dewy. So look for that. And temperatures will be falling through the 60s, but not bad at all. Here's a live look outside right now from Canada Beach, where you'll be able to see moonrise and moonset. 62 degrees there right now. We'll look at the numbers for this week. The records are all in the 90s. We won't be that warm, but I think you're going to like it. Back to you. I think we will, too. Thank you, Matt. Some roads across the Carolinas are starting to reopen after Florence flooded much of the region. But floodwaters have many people completely cut off and the power is knocked out for thousands. But many volunteers are already heading down there to try and make a difference. Some drove all the way from Southwest Washington. KGW's Devin Haskins has more on who these volunteers are and why they went all that way, Devin. Well, the four volunteers that drove to North Carolina are all current or retired volunteer firefighters from North Bonneville, Washington. They joined a bigger effort as part of the national nonprofit Sheepdog Impact Assistance. Protectors of their herd, these are the sheepdogs. The sheepdog is the protector of the flock. With a name like sheepdog, you might be expecting... No dogs are involved. They came from all over the U.S., converged on North Carolina to protect their own. We did anything from feeding, feeding people, um, cutting trees, tarping their roofs, just making sure that they're all right. This was Zoe Zaff's first hurricane. It was insane. There was trees down, houses destroyed flooding. She's a wildland firefighter who fought the Eagle Creek fire last year. You might remember this picture of her getting some rest after working the fire line. And in North Carolina, she put those skills to work. I just did a lot of saw work and handed out meals and water and some of the reactions and the way people will talk to you, you can really tell that what they're saying, you know, it, they're saying it from the heart and it means a lot. I've been to Joplin, Jason Hart has uh, done this tornado. before. I went to the Vernonia Little Rock tornado and one of the harder parts, getting people to trust you after a disaster. They're, they're overwhelmed. Um, they some people don't want us there. They don't understand that we're we're volunteers and we don't charge. We do everything for free and they couldn't have gone without the help from their own community. The, the community was awesome. Three days of, of donations helped us get 
6,942 miles round trip to go help the people in North Carolina. I get this. The group performed multiple water rescues while there, saying they rescued over 200 people from flooded waters. Back to you. Boy, we thank Zoe and Jason mm. and all the volunteers. So thank you, Devin. Impressive. Coming up, finally, a little bit of good news after putting out a cry for help. Where Portland's own Unipiper found a pile of his missing shirts he plans to sell for charity. And later, the Blazers, in their own words, days away from the first preseason game, while we learn from the Blazers' biggest star as the team gets ready to start training camp.